Hey computer science students, don't cheat. You're making us all look bad. And in this video, I want to tell you why. I've heard time and time again, computer science students don't know how to code upon graduating college. Or that self-taught programmers are much better programmers than computer science graduates. I've even said computer science is not the same as programming. However, you should know how to code upon graduating with a computer science degree. The reason many don't is due to cheating. Maybe. I don't know. It's just kind of a theory. School is so focused on you got to get good grades in college is like you have to get done with college in four years upon graduating high school. That oftentimes it leads you to overloading your schedule. It pressures you into doing 18 plus credit hours semesters, whether or not you have a job or you're a sports player. Also, you can get everything done within four years, given you don't fail, that, that you're just overloading yourself. And once your time is spread so thin, you realize maybe I don't have as much time as I thought to focus on everything I have going on in my life, including all these college classes, that you really start to feel the pressure of, well, I need to get good grades because that's the only way I'm gonna get a good job or because I need to get good grades to impress my advisor or my parents or myself. That in order to get those good grades on paper, you cheat, you go on Chegg, you copy code from GitHub. I've heard people even paying other people to complete their projects. So just so we're clear, you're paying thousands of dollars for a college course and then paying someone hundreds of dollars to complete your project so you can pass that college course. It doesn't really make much sense, but people are out there doing it. And I'm not saying I'm innocent by any means. I'm not the end all be all. I am the best computer. I was not the best computer science students by any means, but I also didn't pay anyone to code my projects for me. So let's just nip that in the butt real quick. And to sort of back up what I'm saying here, I want to show you my curriculum for my computer science program in which I went to and kind of give you a basic overview into how it's a little confusing how some computer science graduates come out knowing nothing about code. All right, so if you don't know, I went to Old Dominion University, computer science, and I mean, it's not a Stanford by any means, but I learned a lot and it was a solid college experience in terms of learning computer science. Great program, great professor, stuff like that. But uh, this was the computer science curriculum uh, required classes. Let's start off there. CS 150, this is your intro to programming course, problem solving and programming one, and then CS 250, problem solving and programming two. Both of those are to teach you the basics of C++ to stay on the programming courses. The major emphasis categories of these courses follows. You have programming, you have computer architecture, you have applied technology, and you have computational mathematics. So programming, we already went CS 150, 250. Those are basically two years of like intro to programming problem solving and programming one and two. And then you have 361, advanced data structures and algorithms where you are writing code, but you're writing data structures and algorithms using code. CS350, introduction to software engineering. This, you actually team up and write a, and code a project in a, um, well, how about we do this? CS350, introduction to software engineering. You learn about the software development process, so kind of what it's like to be in a software development, software engineering team with emphasis on the tools and techniques that support project teams. So waterfall method and agile and things like that. Topics include software development process models, requirements, automated testing. So you do testing, you do code documentation, you do builds, version control, configuration management, issue tracking, agile methods. And then the course requires each student to participate as a member of your project team and to demonstrate proficiency with a variety of development tools. You're actually coding something. So obviously another programming course. The next one is object oriented programming and design. I don't know why they did these out of order, not like, you know, according to how you count. Anyway, object oriented programming and design. Obviously you're going to, that's actually what this white book right here is. Obviously you're going to be doing programming in that course, but you code in C++ and Java methods of object oriented analysis and design with unified model. Like you don't just learn this by learning the concepts, you learn the concepts and then you implement them with code via projects. And then CS 355 principles of programming languages. You can read everything that this entails, but what I want to point out is small programs in several languages required. You, if, if, if I recall correctly, this is where I learned a bunch of different programming languages. I learned like SML and J, I learned Prolog, I learned Pavre, and in each language I had to create a project, I had to code a project. So you're actually coding with a new language in order to take the knowledge that you learned from learning C++ and Java 
over to different languages, imperative languages, functional, logical, object oriented. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six classes that are dedicated to programming in your required credits. However, you're also required to take CS electives. Now, obviously, if you plan to come out as a software engineer, then you may not want to focus on cybersecurity, right? Software engineers, that's a different job than cybersecurity or game development. If you want to do game development, sure, go ahead. In all honesty, I did intro to AI, um, but that was a lot, that was actually a lot of pro a lot more programming than a lot of my different classes. So that's a programming course. I came over here, I did web programming. That's a programming course. I did app development for smart devices. That's a programming course. And I'm sure many of these, I mean, systems programming, I'm sure many of these are programming courses in and of themselves. So you see, it's kind of difficult to make it all the way through your computer science curriculum and attain that computer science degree without knowing how to code. Now I'm not saying you're gonna be some expert programmer and you can put together a web application just like that. That's not what I'm saying. But there are a lot of people who don't even know what a function is or what parameters are or any of these data structures. All they really know are integers and variables and that's about it. And if you don't believe me, you'd be surprised. And obviously looking at what I took, I took it specific for me. I took a lot more programming classes than was required in terms of programming classes because I knew that's what I wanted to do. The whole entire point of going to college is not just to get that, that piece of paper, it is to learn. And if you're actually focused on learning in most of other computer science curriculums or at least similar to mine, at least somewhat similar to mine, then you should have a basic understanding of how to code and the fundamentals of programming when you graduate. Because at least at my school, from what I just showed you, there were six programming specific courses that every computer science student needed to take, it was a requirement, in order to graduate with a computer science degree. And those six classes alone should teach you how to code. Maybe not all computer science curriculums are built like that, maybe you only take two programming courses. If that's the case, it's kind of weird, but it could be true. But if most computer science curriculums are somewhat like mine, then there's zero doubt in my mind that you should have at least a decent understanding of programming upon graduation. And if you don't, then either your college did you a disservice or maybe you cheated, you know better than me, or maybe you didn't really focus on learning and you focused on getting better grades. And I'm not saying any of this to get on you about or make you feel bad, I'm saying, I'm saying this to try to help you. I understand grades are important, but learning is more important. There are a few things that are much easier said than done, but uh, I'm gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> to ensure you don't succumb to the pressure of cheating and that you can actually take advantage of the learning process that occurs during college in all these classes, you gotta be smarter about how you take your classes. First and foremost, the workload. A lot of people are pressured into, I gotta get done in four years. Well, the average at ODU was four and a half years, it took me five years. Now I went to community college and I did a few other random things. It was a bit weird, but I graduated high school in 2013. I graduated college in 2018. Last time I checked, that's five years. So don't worry about that. If everyone else that you went to school with graduated before you, who cares? That's their life, this ain't, it's not your life. I guarantee that if you go, you know, you take a course or two less every single semester, and maybe that causes you to go to college a year, maybe even a year and a half or two years longer, you're going to be learning a lot more and coming out a much smarter individual from college because you're able to focus more time on the classes that you took instead of being spread way too thin. Don't be pressured to finishing it in four years. Take your time at your own pace. That'll also allow you to spend more time on your courses so you don't procrastinate. And trust me, I know this one all too well. I'm very, very bad at procrastinating, or am I good at procrastinating? I procrastinate a lot. <laughs> and here's the problem with that. When you procrastinate, let's say you're given a month to do a particular programming project in school. That whole entire month, if you get started early, you can code a little bit every day or every other day, whatever fits your schedule. And then when you hit a roadblock, you just go to office hours or Zoom or whatever they do nowadays. One way or another, you talk to your professor when you've exhausted other possibilities and get them to help you, help walk you through it or get you over that hurdle. That's kind of what, what they're there for. But if you wait the whole entire month until a day or two before it's actually due, not only are you gonna be ashamed or embarrassed to reach out to your professor because you don't want them to know that you waited this long, even if you do reach out to them, there are a lot of other people who procrastinated as well and that professor, you really think they're gonna stay up the whole entire day and all night in order to answer your question and the 10 other 
people's questions that also procrastinated this long. They waited until the night before to try to code a whole entire program that should have taken them a month. So what happens then? Well, best case scenario, you figure out how to complete it. You turn it in, you get a passing grade. You probably didn't learn anything. And even on the little things that you did learn, you're going to forget. It's like cramming for a test instead of actually understanding the concepts to pass the test. You cramming for a test the night before, you may get a, get a passing grade, but you're not going to remember any of that the day after the test. Once that test is done, you forget everything. Worst case scenario, there are a few. You cheat. You go on uh, GitHub. You're like, oh, this project looks like mine. You rip it. And okay, let's change up a few of these variable names so they can't uh, search it. And you turn that in. You get a passing grade, but you literally cheated. You stole. You didn't learn anything. Or you pay someone. <laughs> you pay someone to do the project for you. And then you're able to turn it in. You get that grade, but you don't learn anything. Not only did you waste the money paying that person to do it on something that you should have done, but you also wasted the money that you spent on the class because that class, while you got a good grade and you passed the class and it goes towards your degree, you didn't learn anything. The whole point of college is to learn, not just to get that cheap skin. And I think that's all I have to say on the matter.